The only thought in my head as I ran barefoot down the stairs and out the door with a dead cat in my arms is, I never even fucking wanted a cat. <laughs> I had this cat corpse papoose fashion from bathroom towels slung across my front and headed to the only veterinary office I knew in Queens, five long New York City blocks away. And my British house guests yelled out the window after me, good luck to you, mate. Let us know what you need. <clears throat> yeah, thanks, guys. It was 2002, and I'd been living for a handful of months in a 400-square-foot makeshift walk-up apartment on the second floor of the landlord's house with my actress girlfriend. I say actress in air quotes, not because she was a porn star, but because... <laughs> <laughs> She enforced strict vegan rations in our household to maintain her ideal weight and was voluntarily unemployed to remain stage ready at all times. And yet, curiously, never went on any auditions, <laughs> porn or otherwise. And in the short time we've been living together after I moved cross country to start my personal odyssey in the city that never sleeps, we'd somehow managed to acquire three cats. The first was Miss Lucy, a blackish brown snarling ball of angst and fluff adorned in a purple velvet collar, a dainty bell jingling around her neck. Her beloved human was a friend of the actress and had decided to move to LA to start her film career and it required a quick escape from her somewhat controlling, much older sugar daddy, so she had to go right now and very fast and packed up the Mustang convertible the sugar daddy bought her for her 21st birthday with only the essentials. And uh, Miss Lucy didn't make the cut. The actress said we had to take Miss Lucy, that she wasn't cut out for the streets and we were her only hope of survival. To me, Miss Lucy looked like she could fuck someone up. <laughs> but I agreed to one cat, figuring that would satisfy her persistent requests because her childhood cat loved her sister best and she'd always wanted just one cat to love her and only her. Now, maybe because I'm not really a cat person, or maybe because Miss Lucy identified with my general disgust of our shitty apartment after living in the sugar daddy's penthouse, literally just down the hall from Britney Spears. But from the moment she arrived, Miss Lucy insisted on sitting in my lap at all times, whether I liked it or not. And because of this, the actress was triggered with childhood cat envy all over again. <laughs> if Miss Lucy loved me best, clearly we needed another cat. <laughs> and I had a quiet fear that we'd be getting cats until one liked her. <laughs> so a couple months later, we found ourselves at an adoption event just to look, she said. And uh, we came home with Lyric. Lyric was gray and white and super chill and cuddly, and thank God he was everything the actress ever wanted. They were soulmates, she said, and would summon him to come sleep right in between us every night, which was awesome. <laughs> when he'd boop my head or knead her belly like biscuits in the throes of our sexy time. <laughs> and then the next month, the landlords knocked on the door to ask us if we'd take in a third cat as a favor. They'd found him in the back alley on trash day inside a cardboard box with the words, have mercy written on it. <laughs> they had two German shepherds. We can't take him, they said, but we'll pay for everything. He just needs a home, and you already have two cats. What's one more? <laughs> sure, what's one more? 
And so we named him Oliver, and he was our little ginger runt with crusty eyes and a big malnourished belly when we took him out of the box. We kept him in the bathtub for the first month, nursing him back to health, and the landlords paid for all the vet visits and medications just like they promised. So then there were five of us, 16 legs in all, <laughs> in our tiny ramshackle apartment being vegan with three litter boxes and everything covered in cat hair. It was everything I ever dreamed of when I'd moved to New York City for a spicier new life. My family and friends made it known that they'd be coming to the Big Apple more often knowing they had a free place to stay. And so I'd saved up some money to splurge on a hide-a-bed couch, and immediately the visitors started showing up. The aforementioned Brits were two women I'd worked with at a summer camp in the Catskills the year before, who flew in a few days early to do some sightseeing before heading upstate for another summer season of singing around a campfire in the wilderness. And on this Saturday morning in June, we had four humans, three cats, 20 legs between us, moving around a matchbox apartment with one bathroom and the pulled out hide a bed couch. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> the Brits were planning to take the subway to Central Park and the apartment was bustling with duffel bag zippers and excuse me's and apologies for taking too long in the bathroom and cats everywhere dodging the commotion. And as we're almost ready to get the day started, the Brits fold up the hide -a bed and I hear a faint thump, thump, thump from inside the couch. <laughs> what was that noise? Nobody heard it. Where are the cats? And there's Miss Lucy, perched on her familiar windowsill of judgment. <laughs> and there's Lyric, sunning himself in the bedroom on the special monogram tempur bed his mother got for him. And where's Oliver? Nobody can fucking find Oliver. I pull out the bed from the couch, and there he is inside, dead. The actress ran in from the bathroom and collapsed. You killed him, you fucking killed him. And I was like, first off, I didn't kill him. And second, what the fuck am I supposed to do with a dead cat? I wrapped him in a towel and ran towards the vet we'd been taking him to for all of his orphan visits. Surely they'd be able to help, right? I started to wonder if the landlords might offer to help us pay for this. Is it even possible to resuscitate a cat? Should I be giving him CPR? And as I'm wondering this, now with the actress chasing after me in a whirlwind of emotionally irrational obscenities, calling me a murderer down the block for all the neighbors to hear, wouldn't you know, Oliver starts breathing. <laughs> Panting, really, like a dog, and there's foam, coming out of his mouth and a crazed look in his eye. What does this mean? Is he better? He does not look better. Uh, this, he, uh, this actually might be worse than when he was dead. I get to the vet's office and throw the door open and I say, help, help, my cat needs help. And the lady at the front desk barely looks up from her enormous desktop computer and unimpressed, she says, yeah, honey, this looks like an emergency. Is, is this an emergency? Yes, this is an emergency. My cat just got smushed in the couch and he was dead and now he's this. And I hold out my papoose to show her the foaming, googly-eyed zombie cat. <laughs> We don't do emergencies here, sweetheart. Sorry. Oh my God. Well, what the hell am I supposed to do now? Where do I take him? I don't have a car or a phone or shoes. <laughs> the closest place is the Schwartzman Animal Hospital. 
So I asked for the address because it's 2002 and smartphones haven't been invented yet. <laughs> and she tells me it's in Manhattan. Of course. Over the bridge where no trains go and there's no fast route by car from where we're living across the river in Queens. Annoyed, she hands me the receiver from over the desk to call a cab, Oliver still panting like a lunatic with his tongue hanging out in my other arm. The cab shows up and the actress snatches Oliver from my arms and gets into the back seat. I'm in the front trying to figure out how to tell the driver where to go when I don't exactly know where to go. And the actress is soothing Oliver for the half hour it took us to get there. You're okay, baby. I'll keep you safe at home from now on. Don't be scared of her. She probably didn't mean to kill you today. <laughs> Truly a dramatic performance worthy of all those auditions she wasn't going on. So there were six emergencies ahead of us in the waiting room, limping dogs, illegal ferrets, and our cat swaddled, swirling eyes, mouth wide open, still panting, happily at this point like a Labrador. A human eventually came to take him into the back with the reminder that we needed to be patient. After an hour, she returned to say Oliver was going to make a full recovery, albeit with just a sprinkle of brain damage. They were giving him fluids and would keep him overnight for observation, and that was going to cost $4,000. Oh. I'm sorry. $4,000 for an overnight stay for the free cat our landlords found in the alley? Will he live if we take him home now? She looked at me stoically and suggested that pet insurance would probably cover this. Do you have pet insurance? <laughs> Who the fuck has pet insurance? I'm a public school teacher. I make exactly three cents an hour and I can't hardly afford basic life necessities in this town because my girlfriend insists we spend all of our money on premium vegan food so she can keep her ideal weight for her non-existent acting career and that shit is expensive. And what the hell do I even do? $4,000 is the exact same to me as $1 million. <laughs> I took a breath. <laughs> Do you happen to have a payment plan? <laughs> they did. And as I'm filling out the credit forms, the practical side of me is thinking, I didn't even fucking want a cat. What if I asked the hospital if they could just keep him as an off hours mouse catcher or waiting room support animal? Maybe someone has a little kid who, can, who wouldn't mind a slightly unstable pet that walks like he's had a few martinis. <laughs> How the hell am I going to afford this? Between the voluntarily unemployed actress, the cat-crushing Brits, and the landlords who definitely didn't sign up for this shit, I was starting to realize that I'm the only one paying this bill and desperately scanned the pet emergency waiting room for a cougar. <laughs> what are the chances there's an older sugar mama around here with her shit together who might want a young coconut like me to wear assless chaps and make her feel pretty while she smokes Virginia Slims and says things like, whatever you need, sweetheart. Anything you want, it's on me. Alas. If only. <laughs> so another hour, barefoot like a hobo in the hospital, a hard check on my newborn credit, and I was approved for $4,000 with a 30% interest rate. <laughs> so it'd only take me about 25 years to pay it off. The next morning, while the Brits spent their last day at the Empire State Building, I returned to the pet hospital with shoes on to pick up the most expensive thing I had ever spent money on. <laughs> <laughs> a 
a free orphan cat found inside a cardboard box in the alleyway on trash day who died and came back to life with just a few sprinkles of brain damage. <laughs> you know, sometimes he just jumped straight up into the air for no obvious reason. And uh, he preferred to use his front paw to scoop food into his mouth. <laughs> and he never again stepped foot inside a litter box, understandably skittish around all things with a lid. That astronomical hospital bill without any offer for mutual responsibility was the last straw in helping me locate my backbone to set a long overdue boundary with the actress. I stopped paying her half of the rent and I started buying contraband food. <laughs> Exclusively cooking meat covered in cheese for myself. She didn't put up much of a fight on the vegan thing once it wasn't an amenity anymore and begrudgingly found herself a job. I made the breakup official the day she came home fired from that new job after a week and asked me to pay her half of the rent because this was an emergency. Oh no. <laughs> we don't do emergencies here, sweetheart. Sorry. I have no problem supporting the arts. <laughs> but I am no sugar mama on this public school teacher salary. So she took her soulmate lyric with her and persuaded the sugar daddy to allow Miss Lucy to return to the penthouse. She offered to take Oliver, but not if it meant she had to pay that hospital bill. And so on principle, I kept him. <laughs> as my layaway luxury companion. <laughs> Single cat mom, one human, one cat, six legs between us, our bachelor cupboard stocked with fancy feast and ramen. I paid off the balance from that one time he died in just a couple short years. <laughs> He cuddled me through three more breakups, helped me write my papers during grad school. He never asked questions when I'd come home at dawn after my nights of a little uh, no sleep till Brooklyn. And uh, all our vi visitors begged to hear his resurrection story after they got the tutorial on how to store the hideaway bed without killing anyone. I never even fucking wanted a cat. But wouldn't you know, that miracle, weirdo, orange zombie ended up becoming my best friend while I figured my shit out in the biggest, most exciting, and sometimes loneliest city in the world. Oh. Give it up for Jamie Barker.